Now I'm going to talk about I.O. and the I.O. setup, which is the in and out. We're going to go to setup here, and next we're going to go down here to where it says I.O. right there. Now, here we go. We are in the I.O. setup window. Sorry for the input. This is the back of my M box. Now, if you have an M box 2 or whatever, you'll see the I.O. setup when you go to your I.O. setup dialog box. You can see it right here. Now, you know, the first part you see here, we have analog, which is 1 and 2. That's 1 and 2 inputs on the back of my inbox. We also have SPDIF, which is 3 and 4. Now, SPDIF is the um, back on the back of the inbox. It's these RCA inputs, which is 1's red, 1's white. That's in and out for SPDIF, which also carries a word clock, which means it syncs at the same time also, but it's also used for input and output of uh, data back in and out of our Pro Tool system through our inbox. And here you see my input right here. Once I click on that, we see below here we have new path. I can build a new path. I have a new sub path I can make. I can delete this path also. Now, by selecting it there, you can select this path. We will hit the little arrow here, triangle right at the side, and we see the sub paths. And my sub paths are mono path. I would click on there, it says here. You can't change the format of this path because it is currently in use. So be aware of that. You cannot change a path. See that? Once it's in use. And there's my other part, which is the in one. So my master is the one and two. My sub path is one, which is mono left. And in two is mono right. Now, this is good to understand is for our configuration and how we would route signals in our Pro Tool system. Now, of course, here we have SPDIF. If I had a SPDIF cable in, I would use SPDIF. Of course, there's no analog right here. See, that's all blocked out, but it would all be digital. And as you can see here in SPDIF, there are no subpaths. Or right here. There's just, there's one subpath here, mono left, but just a digital subpath, not an analog subpath. Be aware of that, because SPDIF is digital. Next, we have our output. Now here in the output, this is the output coming out of our inbox. This would go back to our playback monitors, we'll say, for example, or to another mixing system. We're gonna set this output to a different mixing system somewhere else. But in this case, it's gonna to go to my playback monitors. And this is the output one and two. And of course, below that, we have our sub paths, which is output one, which is mono. See, I can click here, because it's not in use, see? I can click here again. And see, it took the mono, see, it took that out of there. I can put this back and put a pencil comes up right there, and the mono comes back in there. These are outputs. So I can make the outputs one and two as subgroups, or eliminate them as also as well. Now here we have inserts. Now we want to insert something like, let's say, a, a reverb unit we're inserting some sort of particular system in, and we want to insert something into our Pro Tool system. This is our inputs, inserts here, rather. And we have one and two. Same thing again. I can select it here, as you can see, I can select this one here. And go to here and select it, and it disappears. I go back over it, the pencil appears there. I click on it, and it comes back. So I can have the subpath there, or eliminate the subpath. We'll explain more later on. Next, we have our bus assignments. As you can see here, I've got a pretty big bus assignment set up here. Uh, we're using, in this case, as you can see here, 32 different bus assignments with this bottom part here and you can see that from 1 to 32 different assignments of the sub group and this is our bus path now I can relabel this so we'll notice using our old setup I'll double click that and I call it bus 1-2 and enter so we can change the name of the bus assignments anytime we want to and this is important to know so that when you're actually setting up your mixes or you're doing your session, you want to know what each bus assignment is and what it does. That's important to know. Now go back, that's 3, 4. Now this will be 5 6. And the last one says headphone set mixer. That was 31, 32. I'll change this to 31 32. And now you can see these bus assignments are from 1 to 32, and they're set in pairs. Now I can click on the triangle to the immediate left, and you'll see that it says bus assignment one, 
2, and that says left. See that? And it's plus sign 1, 2, that's right. So normally, I would go in and say, okay, well, I don't want that. I would make this, for example, say, change the name of this, and I'd say, make it say, 1, left. And make this say, 2 is right. And this way, I know what's going on here. I know that bus assignment 1 is left in my subgroup, and bus assignment 2 is right in my subgroup. And they're both model signals. But together, combined together, the left and the right, the master they make up is a left and right bus assignment. Now, I'm going to go over this right now. I think I'm talking too much here to explain this stuff. It's sort of like getting really technical. I'm going to pull up a session. I'm going to show you how some of this path, this actual path working with the bus assignments work.